Dr. Amit Zabtani's passion for giving, combined with his interest in science, set him on the path to a clinical and research career. Currently, Dr. Zabtani is an orthopedic surgery resident at the Sheba Medical Center, having earned a BSc and MD degree from the Hebrew University in Jerusalem. His main interest is preoperative planning and personalized medicine, applying virtual reality, surgical navigation, and 3D printing to provide greater confidence to patients and surgeons before operations. Amit is married to his beloved wife, Sapir, and enjoys spending time with family and friends. As the COVID-19 cases increased exponentially, the world found itself at a deficiency in the number of available ventilators. Although not his core specialty, Dr. Zaptani's building instincts kicked in, and today he will share his agile, life-saving initiative with you. Talpiot XMED, Leadership in Healthcare. Good evening. I want to take you back in time, back at the beginning of March this year, which now sounds like decades ago. The COVID-19 outbreak just emerged. Data and news from pandemic countries regarding the shortage of ventilators became an issue. For me, the idea that the doctor will have to prioritize which patient will have ventilator and which not, was horrifying. Meanwhile, a cold war started between governments and powerful organizations around the world regarding medical equipment. Putting your hand on a new ventilator became mission impossible. And back then, there were awesome places. Places where people were able to sit together and drink beer, to socialize. We used to call those places bars. So, in one of those bars, me and my best friend from high school, which serves as I-level engineer in one of those intelligence units of IDF, and the easiest way to explain what he's doing for your life is just to say there's some kind of cue from James Bond movies. And our biggest hobby is to play with ideas. It can be hypothetical ideas or real ones. Sometimes it's just another woodworking project, and sometimes it's how to design the best safety chair to your dog when you're riding a scooter in Tel Aviv. And this evening, we have started to play with the idea of dealing with the ventilator crisis and how we can help the situation. And after a few hours and a lot more of beers, we understood three important things. Firstly, inventing a new ventilator from scratch is not feasible and we don't have enough time for it. Secondly, we have to base our solution on approved, common and cheap technology. The third thing we understood this evening that we sat too far away from the restroom, which was a huge mistake. And after a few more beers, we understood that it had to be a conversion of some device. The day after it, while reviewing all kinds of breathing supporting machine that met our criteria from the night before, one of the options was BPAP. Just a few words about BPAP. BPAP stands for B-level positive air pressure device. It's some kind of non-invasive ventilator that uses positive pressure to support breathing. It's quite common in hospital and even more common in people's houses as a sleeping support device. It is cheap and most importantly, as non-invasive ventilator, we were still able to find it in the market. So far, the good news. Five days after the beginning of our journey to the ventilator, while mapping the technological and mechanical factors of BPAP as a possible convertible device, we understood how big the challenge is. Our biggest challenge was on monitoring. BPAP only knows what it produces. It doesn't really know what a patient gets or excels. It doesn't have any alarming system regarding the patient. Modern ventilators have two limbs. The first one, the inspiratory limb, push air to the patient. The other limb takes the air back from the patient to the ventilator, the expiratory limb. BPAP only have one limb. The expiratory air leaks around the patient mask. And this brings me, me, this bring me to the third problem. When dealing with such a contagious pathogen like COVID, you cannot just let the expiratory air to leak from the patient mask. It will pollute the environment of the patient. 
The fourth problem was that most of BPAP devices do not support any oxygen entry. So we understood how big the challenge is, so we started to collect a team. And we collected the dream team, the best physician from Shiba Medical Center, anesthesiologist, lung expert, ECU doctors. Everybody wanted to help. With the, ad, with the unlimited resources of IDF, my friend unit gave us the best experts and engineers, and the ability to do the impossible one time after another. The devotion and compliance of people to the project was amazing. No question asked, just let me know how can I help. Maybe it was a sense of urgency, maybe patriotism. Anyway, it was exciting and heartwarming. We used BPAP just as a bellow, not more than that. We even invented the better bellows than BPAP, but we stick with BPAP just because of the FDA approval. We used NRV, non rebreathable valve, some kind of one-way valve close to the patient mask. And we took out short limb that include PIP valve and HME filter. We call this solution the one and a half limb solution. In this way, we overcame both the limb problem and the pollution. Because of safety concern, we decided to connect the O2 downstream to BPAP, but upstream to the sensors. But developing, this, developing the module was our biggest effort. On one hand, hardcore mechanical and electrical engineering. We used pressure and oxygen sensor closest to the patient mouth to improve the accuracy of the system and bidirectional flow sensor to enable both expiratory and inspiratory monitoring. On the other hand, our software team coded algorithms for alarming with 24 seven loop recorders and the ability to report back. We try to simplify everything based on the assumption that if ventilator will be in deficit, our ventilator will be operated by untrained hands, so we have to keep it simple. I want to share with you the exciting moment of the first time that the magic happens. Two weeks after the beginning of our project, we actually were able to ventilate a demo lung. We conducted five different experiments on various simulators and modules. All of them showed similar ventilation factors comparing to the gold standard ventilator when using pressure control ventilation. 22 days after the beginning of our project, we started with mass production. All packages of BPAP from Shiba Medical Center, including modules, connectors, filters, and tube, everything was included, even simple manuals. 28 days into the project, we delivered to Shiba Medical Center 100 ventilators. We built an assembly line with the ability to produce 300 units per week. The Minister of Health even defined our project as a doomsday weapon. As a startup, we had everything you can imagine. Unlimited resources, devoted team, and most importantly, a major need. After big hopes, exposure, newspaper, TV shows, we felt like we are actually saving the world. Not even one patient needed our ventilator yet. But don't take me wrong, I'm, wrong. I'm more than happy the situation hasn't got so bad. But, during the process, we realized something. The model we developed, the potential of using the module as a monitoring unit of any ventilator with the ability to record 24-7 and report back. Devices can be used for diagnosing, to collect data for home monitoring of chronic patients that have the ability to contact emergency services when needed. We patent both the conversion and the monitoring unit during the process. These days, 
We work hard with our lung service to conduct clinical trials which using the module to home monitoring with 24-7 loop recorders and machine learning algorithm that diagnose and report in real-time respiratory distresses and contact emergency services to save lives. I guess this is what happened when mixing doctor, major, and a lot of beer. Thank you so much. Talpiot XMed. Leadership in healthcare.